I was not ready for the Buck Bumble theme song to fuck as hard as the Buck Bumble theme song fucks. Would it be so bad if an 84-year-old got into heroin? Welcome to the Cat Organizational Podcast. You idiot. It's written down in front of you, you idiot. This is like the buffalo chicken wrap of answers. I haven't heard about hot orcs in a while. We were so horny for motion controls in 2005. I can't wait to come back and tell you how it was Noah's Ark, you asshole. I would also like to retroactively say I've never had cotton candy acid. So Andrew's 100% doing a voice, right? Everybody get off IMDb now. Time to record. This episode and probably this whole this whole podcast is a mistake. Hello and welcome to Debate This, the show where no one is right, but someone is definitely wrong. In this podcast, we take time out of our busy adult lives to talk about comics, video games, and how Joker getting 11 Oscar nominations isn't the rec- recognition for comic book films we wanted, but it is the recognition we deserved. Did everybody forget that Black <laughs> Panther won Oscars? That was a thing that happened, right? I think everybody forgot that. I think that, everybody yeah. forgot. I didn't just live in that fever dream. And, well, Return of the King got a nom for Best Picture, didn't it? Oh, it got... I mean, Return of the King has the most Oscars of any movie, or is tied for most Oscars of any movie of all time. Yeah. But that's not a comic book, Andrew. Question, what's well, Return of the King? Okay. Lord, Lord of the, of the Rings. Rings. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen that. Infant. Um, <laughs> he, was, he was busy being a, ba- a babby, a little babby boy. Get out of here. Nostalgia is a hell of a drug, guys. It's it's relaunched. It sure is. Tw- <laughs> it's relaunched twenty year old franchises, uh, kept weak series limping along well past their shelf lives, and keeps nerds comparing things to Firefly like no other sci fi has come out since two thousand three. Wow, man, you're gonna piss some people off, and they deserve uh, it. Yeah, and I love yeah. Firefly, but come on, guys. <laughs> so we've decided to bite off a piece of that sweet nostalgia pie. We're meeting with some game studios today to work on rebooting a long-forgotten character, bringing them into 2020 with a fresh new look, updated gameplay, and new fans to greet them. However, we're we're down a down a debater today. Yeah, we didn't we didn't just fire Todd. He's just not here. <laughs> yeah, Todd's traipsing about New Zealand. Yeah. Welcome to Guest Quest 2019. Hell yeah! It's 2020. <laughs> Fuck. Guest Quest. Guest Quest 2020. Keep it in. But we are joined today by Dave Flam of Left Trigger Right Trigger Podcast. So uh, guys, don't don't blow it in front of Dave. Yo. Hey Dave. Ooh. That's okay. Hi Dave. Hey Dave. This is your first time on Debate This. But it is not your first time necessarily recording with the group. Um, <laughs> uh, that is, God, that is true, huh? Yeah. I honestly, that whole part of my life feels like a fever dream. <laughs> I, I, I don't believe it happened. Yeah. It, it had to have been. It plays like a fever dream too, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't listened back, so oh. <laughs> for all I know, you could be telling the truth. My man, I injected all of those episodes into my brainstem. He did. Like, over the course of two days. It was wild. He did. Yeah, I died a little bit up there. <laughs> but but it was a good death, and I loved it. That's what I love That's what I love hearing about uh, stuff that I work <laughs> on, is, man, you know, I died a little bit. And if, you, if y'all don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about the expertly crafted Full Metal Bazinga, which was the uh, beautiful, beautiful... Uh, sci-fi. Where, I, where were you guys calling it or labeling it as? I mean, you can you can sell this better than I can, but it was a, a sci-fi improv. It was a companion show to the the final season of Big Bang Theory that right. turned into surrealist art. Yeah, <laughs> somewhere along the way, art's a good way to put it. That's a good way of describing it. Not you know, not to be pompous about anything <laughs> that I've made, but <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's Again, it's a it was a fever dream. Uh, it it started out as a joke, like everything does, <laughs> and ended up still being a joke, but one that we took a little more seriously. Yeah, everybody out there needs to listen to it. It's it's amazing. It truly is. Please go watch full or listen to Full Metal Bazinga. I mean, you can you can watch it too if you want. I don't know how that would look, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. So here's a, here's the thing. I think we talked about this at one point, but we never actually tried it ourselves. Technically, we do start a timer, um, and it's supposed to go in each episode, and it's supposed to go for the length of the actual television episode that we watched. So huh. theoretically, oh. you could watch and listen at the same time. 
I don't know if anything would sync up at all. Yeah. Probably not. Or if but... it's recommended or yeah, or works. <laughs> what but... weird heady commentary that would be. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. I, I wonder, like, every time Giovanni talks about, um, what's his name, Bill Prady uh, being a sp- <laughs> or, uh, Who's the other one? Not Bill Prady. Um, Chuck Lorre being a spider god. Um, that's when Sheldon comes on the screen and he just looks at you for 35 <laughs> seconds and yeah, his eyes start to time. bleed. Normally you see that in the show and you're like, okay. <laughs> it <doesn't Sure>. <laughs> but, what, but when it but. syncs up with the episode, it, it all makes sense. You're like, oh my God. It's like listening to Dark Side of the Moon and watching The Wizard of Oz. It just Wizard takes you to a whole yeah. other level. Right, right. Profound syncopation. All right, but we are doing a, we are doing a podcast today. We're not just talking about Full Metal Bazinga, as bizarre and great as it is. Um, Which is a podcast. It is a podcast. <laughs> um, so, joining me to pitch these new, uh, these rebooted, dead video game characters today are Andrew Ristar Henderson, yes. Matt Arrow the Acrobat Cole, cool. and Dave Dex Flam. Okay. Yeah. Is there a Dex or did you mean Gex? I meant Gex. Darn it. No, no. We're, we're not allowed to talk about Gex, Gex in any podcast exist. that I'm on, so it's okay. I oh, almost good. brought Gex as my character today, but I, I knew that wouldn't be allowed. I was incredibly surprised that you didn't. <laughs> um, so guys, we're here in front of our panel of representatives from Competing Game Studios. Um, what character do you want to pitch to reboot, and what's going? what specifically is going to make them popular in 2020? Oh, Kyle. Oh, Kyle, my sweet summer child. It's not oh, just boy. a character. <laughs> Kyle, it's it's a team. We're rebooting a whole ass team, Kyle. We're bringing Rash, Zitz, and Pimple. They're all coming back for the reboot of what is... That's their names? That's actually their names. Yeah, that's super their <laughs> Those names. Those are their names. That's, oh. that's horrible. <laughs> Rash, yeah. Zitz, and Pimple are coming back for the reboot of what is arguably the hardest game of all time. Coming to you hot in 2020, and also hopefully to the next DLC Smash Fighter Pass are the new and improved Battletoads. Um, also, let me just say up front, yes, Rare and Microsoft have announced a Battletoads reboot for sometime next year. Um, if we're being real, it looks like trash. It does not look very good, and ours is does going really? to be way better. Yeah, it's it's the Teen Titans Go of Battletoads. Um, oh, yeah. oh, no. And it's like... A, they're going for the side scroll or beat em up thing, but like it just mm-hmm. it's Battletoads has such a weird fan base of people who are really into the masochism of that game and turning it into a cartoon network.com flash game was not the answer. Oh my. They released nine minutes of gameplay and then there's been no update since E3, so like I don't know if it's happening. Oh but... uh, this looks yeah, this I looks mean that's weird. the whole game. Yeah, it's uh it looks rough. So we're not gonna do that. <laughs> Um, we are going to take this team, which first off, Kyle, let me just say teams, teams are all in right now. Everybody loves team up games. Avengers, two Ultimate other Alliance. games with teams, Avengers, <laughs> Ultimate Alliance done. I just did it. There's a team. You have one Avengers, Ultimate Alliance. Dare I say, uh, the last NFL game that I don't know what it was called. 2k19, wow. I guess. Um, dare you it. say, yeah, dare <laughs> I say, or maybe FIFA. That's a game that people that aren't me play. That feels like cheating, but fine. Whatever. It's a team. People like teams. You get by on a technicality. Yeah. Well, no. It's been noted. I'm going to take my point on Avengers Ultimate Alliance. I'll give you that the other two are bullshit. But I mean, we literally just talked about Overwatch. Like, that would have been such <laughs> uh-huh. a better example. Yeah, but there's not like a concrete team that you play as in Overwatch. I mean, in the story there is, though. Yeah, well, or in like, the story, like, but like, who plays like Overwatch six for the story? And Matt's yeah. arguing against himself already. Guys, yeah. good start. don't do this to it's me. It's pretty on brand. <laughs> so listen, teams are all in, um, and you know what comes with teams, Kyle? Merch. Everybody's going to pick one of these characters, and they're going to love them, and then there's going to be a ton of merch, and it's going to sell like crazy, because that's what people like in 2020. Teams and that's merch true. and teamwork and co-op play. Kyle, co-op play is so big, and it's going to be huge with Battletoads BX 2020. I don't know. I haven't come up with a name yet. We're workshopping that. Uh, Battletoads, reboot it. It's going to happen. It's going to be great. All right. Um, Battletoads BX 2020, we're, that's what we're calling it. Um, Dave, what, what do you got? <laughs> what are you rebooting? Oh, God, where to even begin with this? 
Um, to be honest, so my character has so many overwhelmingly positive trending points right now that I can already see their name like <laughs> up in lights on every Twitter feed post from now until like 2030. Oh. So let me here, let me I'll help you out. Let me take a quick minute. I'll point out some trends that are happening in 2019 going into 2020. Please do. Please. So we we've got the Star War, right? Sure. The, the Star yeah. War, the one individual <laughs> Star War. It's the a whole. It's, a, it's just one. It's one giant war. Got it. Think about it, right? It really is. Their, He's not. They got wrong. Their, listen. They got their laser beams. They got their tails of rebellion. That's the Star War. Yep. And we got the upcoming election happening, and they got their tails of rebellion, and they got their laser beams. <laughs> All that's there. <laughs> and then we got the people trying to save the planet, right? And how are they doing that? You guessed it. Saving the bees. So it's a tale as old as time, a classic story of people versus the power. And that's why my character is Buck Bumble. <laughs> what a weird connection. <laughs> also, so I mean, the theme song is really good, too. Yeah, the theme song fucking slaps. Man, we, Kyle, you actually, I think we should take the legal hit and just pop that bad boy in here at oh. this moment. Oh, it's because happening. Because... I was not ready for the Buck Bumble theme song to fuck as hard as the Buck Bumble theme song fucks. <laughs> like, just, we won't say anything else about it. We'll just let it play, because yeah. it hits you. It hits you in a way you weren't expecting. I mean, it, feature, it features the incredibly uh, memorable lyrics, such as, right about now, it's time to rock with the biggity Buck Bumble. Bump to the bump to the bumble. Bump to the bump to the bump to the bass. You know, it's... It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. To be honestly, though, I played this game when I was a kid and I sometimes just wake up in a haze in the morning and this is the song that's in my head. 100%. <laughs> that's you wake up to the sweet the sweet tones of the Buck Bumble theme. Yeah, it just kind of fades in. That's kind of incredible. This is it's a pretty kick-ass life, right? <laughs> I, I I dig it. Um, so Andrew, what do what do you got for us? How are you gonna beat Buck Bumble and Rash Zits and Pimple? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not. Well, I'm not. I mean, so we've talked a lot about the 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 mystery and the just the absolute wonder that was the late '90s. Um, you know, like how things were optimistic and the world wasn't figuratively and literally on fire, and the most people cared about was publishing their zines. Do you oh, remember? Man. Like, how good were the late '90s? Man, the word the... "zines" is so weird. Yeah, that's because you weren't. That's because you weren't born yet, Matt. It, it's a very well. God right, so, Matt, it. let me let me I walk you. Let me walk you through the podcast. time machine. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me let me open up the time capsule for just a second. So, you had these things where people would like go on a word processor or like a like a first gen like word program and just print out like pages like colored paper like just blue paper yep uh, and their little their little designed zines and they would just you know hand them out and it was uh it was a glorious thing but so i'm th i was thinking about this a lot today and i think the the biggest difference between now and then the reason we've lost that positivity I and mean, the world is different but obviously of course but <laughs> i think the one major difference is now these days we have so few wisecracking heroes. That's it, really. When you, you break it that's down, it? that's it. That's I think the that's one. it. That's it. We nailed it. The and, and the ones that we do have are just so vanilla, so family friendly. Um, we we what we really really need is a new hero, untainted by the touch of of His Majesty Din Disney, the one, the only <laughs> Disney Corporation. <laughs> Our God King, the mouse. Our God King, the sun. The, the sun never sets on the Disney Corporation. But but we don't want them to be too edgy so that they turn out to be Duke Nukem. No, we need something like right mm. in the middle, right? Just like un, just a little, a little edgy, a little like Sonic Plus, right? Like Conquer's Bad Fur Day. We need to fall. No, no, no. Right on, right on what I call the Bart Simpson curve. The Bart Simpson curve is exactly that's the litmus test we're looking for. Don't have a cow, man. But we're not like we're not going to hang out with strippers and hookers and and f bombs. We don't want to be M rated. We want that that slide into that T that that nice T rating. That pushing it on the T, the top end of T rating. 
Yeah, we want we want someone who's going to save the world by making only mildly sexist comments and <laughs> low effort double entendre about the planet Uranus. Oh, it's um, is it Leisure That's Suit it. Larry? Are we doing a Leisure Suit Larry game? In 2020, I present to you Blasto as the hero we need. I Blasto. Do not know what Blasto is. What the hell is Blasto? Andrew, why don't Blasto. you tell us about Blasto? <laughs> Blasto is a nightmare. <laughs> Blasto sounds like a, an event on wow. the Mythbusters. Yeah. So think like a like a like a low rent Zach Brannigan. Zap is it Zaf Brannigan? Zap. 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 I never I never remember. Zap that. Zap Zap Bran- uh, Zaf. Zap Z- Zaf Brack. Z A P P. That's what I was ah, you stole that joke from me. <laughs> ah, sorry, bud. <laughs> uh it, he's a low rent Zaf Brannigan. Uh, he was actually, so get this, in 1998, voiced by Phil Hartman from SNL, like one of the last things that Phil Hartman did, which is... which is Incredible. Wow, yeah. this is um, the last thing? One, I, I think one of the, yeah, it was, I think he, I think that was the year he died. Oh, Phil Hartman, Wikipedia. Add it to the list of search queries. Yeah, yeah, he yep. uh, died May 28, 1998, Whew. so this was one of the last Phil Hartman vehicles. Um so Phil Hartman voices uh, the titular. There it is again. S uh, three titular Blasto. Um, I, I get I get a prize now. Um, Phil Hartman voices Blasto, and he is kind of like he's kind of got the uh, the Captain Quark for, build from um, uh, Ratchet and Clank. You guys know that? Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love yep. Ratchet and Clank. There it is. Yeah, built like a built like a V. You know, <laughs> <laughs> just, like, just the letter V, um, and got the. No, my name is Blasto, like that kind of you know thing going on, and uh, but it's like, but what if that? But he says a butt joke, <laughs> huh? Huh? Hey, is, have I got your guys's attention now? Hey, we we got to cater to the to Gen Z right now, and there's nothing kids love more than Hell butt yeah. jokes. Blasto, Blasto looks like the crimson chin from fairly odd parents and johnny bravo yeah. mashed into one oh thing. this is yeah, definitely like the alter ego of jo- the superhero alter ego yeah. of johnny yeah, bravo yeah absolutely 100%. Like, that's, that's like a that's like a pretty common cartoony look so the whole purpose of the whole like plot behind blasto is we've got the alien tyrant bosk who's trying to take over the planet uranus which if you guys <laughs> don't know uranus could also be pronounced uranus and oh. there might be some mm-hmm, some double entendres <laughs> some chances for comedy <laughs> mm-hmm. some, we some got goofs. some we got some good comedy <laughs> yeah we got a couple goofs so great great just solid a plus comedy like uranus is in big trouble <laughs> oh man they must have been in the writer's room for like months trying to plan that one out there's so much cocaine in that writer's room, Dave. There's so much cocaine. It's like either, either that or this is what happens when they ran out of cocaine. Like, there's a bunch of cocaine in the other room, and these guys are like, oh, my God, like, I guess Uranus? Uranus is funny. Let's just do yeah. Uranus. And there's another good one that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see in my rest of my time here. Uh, I'll leave you with this. So uh, at one point in the opening cinema, the, the whoever, the, the chief... The chief asks Blasto <laughs> if he's up to the challenge, and he goes, is a frog's butt watertight? Oh, no. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Android, I don't want to put you on the spot here, but No, please do. A big a, so a big part of this game, the original game was Phil Hartman's voicing of it. Who would you right. recast as Blasto here in 2020? Mm. Do you would you attach a celebrity name to it or would you just use just use some studio voice actors? Um, I think I'm going to do the right thing here and audition for the voice myself. Oh, incredible. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Being real self <laughs> We'll uh we'll schedule you some one-on-one time with uh some of the developers so you can do your voiceover audition as well. Fantastic. Um, I I love it. All right. So guys, um the d- the developers are all interested. They like what what you've said so far, the characters you've brought. Um however, a large part of this project will be using this character in a new way um these were all old, these are all old games video games have come a long way since then what <laughs> right <laughs> since pre-2000 we've moved on from uh 2d side scrollers and very very simple uh 3d platformers um so what 
what gameplay mechanics would you like to incorporate in this game to make it feel more like a uh, 2020 juggernaut release and not a game from over 20 years ago? Matt. Okay, Kyle. So I have a very important question for you. Um, and that very important question is, have you ever played Battletoads? Have I played Battletoads? No. The original one specifically? Yeah, like, or the Game Boy re-release or the SNES one. Have anybody, has anybody played Battletoads? I've seen, I've seen gameplay of it. I know it's, I know it's legend, legendary difficulty, but no, I have not played it myself. Andrew, Dave, Battletoads, yay, nay. I think I've played it once a long time ago. Yeah, I played not the original, but I played the shit out of Battletoads and Double Dragon. And by that, I mean I played a lot of the first level of Battletoads and Double Dragon. <laughs> right. Okay, so so this is important. I Battletoads is hard as fuck. Like, yeah. Battletoads is so hard. Is Battletoads a great game? No. Is it particularly interesting? Uh-uh. Does it have a great storyline? No. Absolutely not. Battletoads is like top tier retro game pantheon solely because it's stupid difficult i had the game boy re-release of battletoads which is not the same as the original battletoads even though it has the same box art which is weird stupid hard just absurdly hard and so what do we do to make that game track in 2020 uh people like souls games let's make a game harder than all the souls games it'll be great so here's what we're gonna do kyle i want you to picture Dark Souls bosses, but you're fighting them with, like, PS4 Spider-Man mechanics and mm. also doing platforming a la the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy re-release. Um, so, like, pixel-perfect junky platforming, fighting stupid hard bosses, but with very, very fast fighting mechanics. How does that sound? That sounds like a nightmare, Matt. It sounds absolutely terrible. <laughs> Sounds great, right? There's so many things wrong with what you said, and I don't have enough time to to, say, to address all of them. Yeah, it's because you kind of like it, right? It's because you kind of want to do it. You kind of want it. I can see it in your eyes. You Dark Souls is not hard. It. Dark Souls is not hard because just for the sake of being hard, it's 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 hard because it's it's uh, it's mm, it's right. challenging, but it's not unfair. <laughs> Battletoads is unfair. It's just impossible. Exactly, and that's, that's what I'm saying. Incredibly different things. We're gonna we're gonna take battle, or we're gonna take Dark Souls. We're gonna take Dark Souls, which is challenging, and then we're gonna make it unfairly hard. Except you're gonna play as frogs. How great does that sound? Doesn't that sound great? I've already answered the question, Matt, and I don't want to indulge you any further because I'm with Andrew. I hate I hate intentionally difficult things. Well, so that's why we're gonna use the PS4 Spider-Man fighting mechanics because I think we have established before in this podcast that the ps4 spider-man fighting mechanics are like pretty top tier like you don't get much better as far as fighting goes than those mechanics and that was kind of like the cool part about battletoads is that fighting enemies in the beat-em-up sections wasn't the worst part of that game falling off platforms and trying to ride the spaceship between spikes was by far the worst part of that game but like punching people with the spiky glove or the giant boot not that hard. Um, so we're going to take really cool fighting mechanics, which make the game fun and appeasing to look at, and we're going to put them with stupid hard bosses, and we're going to take away your save system because Battletoads. I want you to know, Matt, I'm on the set, the, I'm on, I'm beh- standing behind the panel of video game studios, and Sony wrote in big block letters, uh, vertical integration with broken controllers, and circled it real big. Um <laughs> Uh, Dave, how are you going to bring uh, Bumble Buck Bumble into 2020? So to be honest, I uh, Matt, you had me there until you were like, until you said um, the thing about the save states. That oh was, yeah, me. I mean it's it's a Battletoads game. Like we can't let you save in a Battletoads game. Maybe this time <laughs> yeah. we'll give you passwords. I guess that's true. Maybe we'll give you like 67 digit passwords that if you oh, write no. them down quick oh. enough. And put them back in, you can go back to that level. What a flex. Well, on PlayStation, you could take photos now. So maybe you True. can actually save it for like... Mash that, s- that switch screen save button. You can disable the screen save button, though, when the <laughs> password <laughs> screen <laughs> is up. Screen sharing is disabled. <laughs> Wait, that's true. God. Okay, so get this. It's 2020 now. What? We have two joysticks on our controllers now. 
What? Which is Holy shit, really? <laughs> yeah, I I didn't realize this. I just had to go, like, I had to turn around and look you at look my at PlayStation it, yeah. controller. We have two joysticks. Dave saw a dual shock the other day and did a triple take. <laughs> quadruple take. This quadruple is completely take. revolutionized the Buck Bumble gameplay. Like, no one could ever have dreamed. This thing was, like, on the N64 before. Now, who? the possibilities are freaking endless. Right? <laughs> okay. So a world, a world is opened. Think about this. To be honest, how many games can you think of today that give your protagonist the freedom of flight? Three. <laughs> Three. <laughs> yeah. Can I actually, I want to write them. Can I write them down? You yeah. Three whole Star games. Wars Rogue Squadron. Star Wars Rogue <laughs> Squadron <laughs> 2 <laughs> Rogue Leader. <laughs> Star Wars Rogue Squadron <laughs> 3. <new> games. <laughs> I said new game. End of list. <laughs> okay. So no longer with Buck Bumble are you going to be chained down to waiting for the jump ability upgrade or some nonsense or tied to the constraints of the developer's floor plan. You are a bee. You are a god. And you are in control. That is to say that I don't think really anything has to change from the original game to translate it over to 2020 because you could already kind of do that and now... We'll have two joysticks, so you'll have even more control. Um, however, to up the ante, using the same motion capture technology that we all got to witness in the many teasers of Death Stranding, we'll have audiences living their dream <laughs> B lives. That, coupled with the new theme song remixes by Grammy-nominated Trent Reznor and Lil Nas X, will make for an experience you will never forget. And then we'll probably also like put it on Switch or something. Wow. <laughs> can, you, can you make sure to keep retain the very human features on these very real bees? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, they're gonna be abominations. They're gonna be did you nightmare. See, did abuses. you see the Death Stranding technology? I think I must have seen it five hundred times. I still haven't played the game. <laughs> it's gonna be <laughs> Dave, it's important be question. Dave, I have an important question. Yeah. Um Yes. Will the animation team have anything or any members from the animation team of Cats the movie? Oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> it depends how much of a budget you're willing to give us, I think. Because that's going to... You're going to have to throw a lot of money. They, you have to give them enough money that they don't hire Cats, that they have more options than the Cats animation team. It's going to be the team from Senua's Sacrifice and the team from Cats together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. That's... Absolutely <laughs> horrifying. <laughs> um, Andrew, save us save oh, us from this God. nightmare. I'm not. <laughs> save I'm us not. from this bee induced nightmare. I can't you know like how like okay, like when someone tells you like don't think of a giraffe and you think of a giraffe, <laughs> like I I can't not think of a Cronenberg esque body horror nightmare <laughs> bee you know man. What? Okay. Here's the best part of it though. If you look at Buck Bumble, you can see that Buck Bumble wears a helmet, right? With goggles, the whole shebang. You don't actually see Buck Bumble's face until you get to the end of the game. You know what I'm saying? And that's when we really show off the technology. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to we're going to highlight this technology as a feature of the game, but but make you wait through at least 35 hours of gameplay before you get to enjoy it. You mean? Yes. You get to see the bee limbs like really you're like, "Wow, that's probably really realistic." I assume I've never really stared at a bee. <laughs> <laughs> But then you get to the end of the game and you have your whole victory, right? And then you see Buck Bumble take off their helmet, breeze blowing through the air, you see the <laughs> hair blow back, and God, uh, is it a sight uh, to see. Uh, <laughs> gross. A bee with long hair. I hate it. Uh, <laughs> why is that so unsettling? <laughs> Andrew's really put off by this uh, description. It's just like it's just slightly left of center, and it's and it oh, it's maddening. Um, okay, Blasto. Um, Blasto sucks, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. Um, if you watch a long play, which like don't, but if you do, it's kind of like it's a. I mean, again, it's a very Gen One early PS One game. 
and it's got all of the trappings of, of of a very mild PS1 game where you're in, you know, they don't have enough textures to like create a landscape. So you're just in this in this void. Infinite void. <laughs> right. You're just jumping on on vague green platforms in an infinite void. And there's like a <laughs> like just kind of this like MIDI, you know, rip 30 second loop behind you. And as Dave mentioned, there was a time in our in our everyone's live where we, lives where we only had one analog stick. So this is this falls under the the umbrella of single analog stick adventures. Ooh. So you you <laughs> so it it is a a third person shoot 'em up, but you're just kind of like moving this this man in vague 3D space, and he just fires forward. So he so it's. It's kind of like a like almost like a shitty twin stick shooter without the twin sticks. <laughs> oh man, gotcha. It's 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 real gross. Um and and the thing is like, you know, this this was so perfected 2 years later with Ratchet and Clank. You know, it was like it was so close. It's so close to being right, it was, but it was so they very just, wrong. They just missed the mark. Yeah. So <clears throat> we're going to trash all of that because that's that's garbage. As you do with a reboot Throw it all away and start over. I'll point out. I'll point out before we move to your next point that 1998, as we found out in our um, bad peripherals episode, is the year the Dual Shock came out. So they again just yes. missed that boat of getting the Dual Shock. This was early 2000 or yep. early 1998. So yeah. So <clears throat> we're trashing all of that, and instead we're gonna give Blasto the 2008 treatment. And turn it into a, a real gritty third person shooter. Oh man! So I'm talking. Oh yeah, I'm talking the whole package, baby. We're gonna give Buck the roadie run, the ability to switch between all of two guns, uh, <laughs> a, a melee move that one shots everything, and and most importantly, to really flesh out the 2008 feel, a greenish grayish filter that sets over top of everything. To really just reinforce the fact that this is not a world you want to be in ever. Now, see, that's good. Thank you. That's important. Yeah, the Matrix filter. That's what we're, mm-hmm. that's what we're here I, for. I will yeah. say, though, that I'm pretty sure you said Buck earlier. And, I mean, I'm happy to take this. <laughs> Did I say Buck? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, sound, he seems like a Buck. Like, like I'm Buck. You know, like, he's, he's a Buck. Buck Blasto. He, he's Buck very Blasto. specifically B- Blasto. Yeah. Though. Buck Blasto. <laughs> How's that? How's that? Grab Name's you? Blasto. Blasto. Some Buck Blasto. Uh, the developers are scribbling things down. Mash up, circle, and big, big red circle around it. Now, now there is one thing I want to make sure to retain. I think that the crown jewel of the Blasto experience is <laughs> <laughs> the, is uh, is to traverse the landscape this this nightmare void and rescue uh, these bikini clad girls who are just called babes. So you just you just you just rescue babes, and that's and that's your that's your collectathon. That's your that's your dog tags and Gears of War. That's your Codex entries and Mass Effect. That's gonna be your 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 Chivo hunters. Is you're gonna you're gonna go collect babes. Your dog tags of war are those babes. So you really you really you 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 really want to draw the line. We are updating the graphics, gameplay, and general yep. general aesthetic to 2020. But yes, sir. all the writing, we're keeping it right in 1998. No, yeah, we're keeping that as the, again. We're we're really gonna time capsule that piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, keep all that there because what I really want to make sure that we don't mess with is that that MIDI clip of Buck saying every time he rescues a babe saying hello nurse. Everyone, everyone right now is looking up how much it would cost to like reuse the Phil Hartman recordings and just like <laughs> just go real low budget on it and just like remix rehash. Yeah, everything. I mean, much like we did with Princess Leia in the newest Star Wars movie. Let's just. Uh, Use that archival footage. Ooh, baby. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that felt bad. Ooh. Yeah, it did feel bad. Yeah. It's a hot take here in 2020. Is it a hot take? It's not. <laughs> it's it's a very a very lukewarm okay. take. Um so we have Matt and your impossible platformer battle thing. We have Dave with uh long haired uh hey, hey, hey. anatomically correct. No spoilers. Bees. That's for the end. <laughs> <laughs> and and Andrew, we have your your gritty war drama, but it but with re reha- just reused nineteen ninety eight recordings. Um, so assume these take off. 
uh, sell real well, get huge acclaim, and the fans demand a sequel. Because uh, we're not just funding, we're not funding one game today. We're let's be honest, we're we're cashing the mm-hmm. big check, trying to fund the next ten years of game development. Sure. Um, how will you expand on this first ent- entrance into your new franchise um, in the sequel? Uh, are there other characters you can pull in? Uh, do, do you have more than one villain that can come come back? Um, update the puzzles. Uh, show that show us this isn't a a one trick pony, and that it can stand to, to be the tent pole for a whole studio, like similar to like Witcher with uh, CD Red or something. Yeah, Matt, <laughs> I'd love to relate Battle <laughs> to the Witcher. That's exactly what I want to do today. <laughs> I'm please don't. I'm already dying inside. <laughs> Okay, so you guys definitely wanted to hear some Battletoads lore, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, is there Battletoads lore? Hell yeah, there is, man. Of course. What what was that, Dave? Absolutely. You sure? Absolutely. Yes. Good. Good. That's what I thought you said. So, um, (laughs) Battletoads 1, the first Battletoads game, uh, you follow two of the Battletoads, Rash and Zitz, because they are trying to rescue Princess Angelica... And the third member of the Battletoads, Pimple, from the Dark Queen, who has no name. She's just the Dark Queen. That is that is the bad. Great. Dark Queen is the bad. Great. Why are they trying to rescue Pimple and Princess Angelica? Because they were all on a spaceship taking Princess Angelica somewhere, and Pimple was like, I've got this sweet space car. Do you want to check it out? And she was like, definitely. And so they went joyriding in this space car, and the Dark Queen plucked them up. Um... And so then Rash and okay. Zitz had to go rescue Pimple and Princess Angelica. So let's jump forward to like Battletoads. I think it's Battletoads in Battleground or Battletoads in Battle Maniacs. Um, yeah, the, the Super Nintendo version um, where instead of uh, having Rash and Pimple, you have, or I'm sorry, instead of having Rash and Zitz, you have Rash and Pimple because Zitz and the daughter of the Cyclone Industries CEO, I don't know who that is, were captured by, you guessed it, the Dark Queen. <laughs> because that's what a Battletoads game is. Like, what? one of them gets captured by the Dark Queen, probably with some other girl plot, and then the other two have to go save them. So, all of these games have been rehashed a bunch of times, and, you know, you pick two of your favorite. Battle Toads, and they've got to go rescue the third one. We're not going to do that, Kyle. Our sequel, uh, we're going to pull something uh, uh, from Team Sonic, and we're going to make our Shadow the Hedgehog game, but we're going to do a Dark Queen game. We're going to see what it's like to be the Dark Queen stealing a Battle Toad. Hell yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, All right. We're probably going to give her guns. Don't know if the president's going to be there. That sounds risky. But uh, Dark Queen's going to get her own game. <laughs> and then... Kyle, like I said earlier, everybody knows that absolutely the hardest part of Battletoads were the uh, spaceship levels, where you had to, like, fly in between walls of spikes. It was a goddamn nightmare. Mm -hmm. Um, We're going to make a racer, because we haven't had a good racer reboot in a little while, so let's (laughs) let's make a Mario Kart, but with Battletoads, and you're only going to have four options. It's going to be Rash, Pimple, Zitz, and Princess Angelica. And maybe if you beat the whole game, you get to play as the Dark Queen in that too. But we're going to make a racer, and we're going to make a Dark Queen game, because um, we don't have enough of those these days. That's the game plan, Kyle. All right. That that sounds great. You've got a whole franchise planned out. Hell yeah, um, I do. I, I can't wait to rent that from Blockbuster yes, Video. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, one, no one tell him. No one tell him. Tell him what? Uh, Dave, uh, what, what do you got for our, our sequels and franchise expansion? expansion? Okay. Of, of Buck Bumble. So I think this... I just I, like saying Buck Bumble. It's, it's great, right? See, you're already selling it for me. Okay, <laughs> so I think this is probably the easy way out. But So everyone knows that... We like, we like easy. Everyone knows... Easy is usually cheap. I assume that in the original game and in our fresh new reboot, the world is being attacked by giant insects called the Herd Army. And it's our job as Buck Bumble to take out the queen. Easy. Of no course. problem. Standard, good action story. But what's that? A cyber queen? Looks like someone behind the scenes has been sneakily up to no good. And who is that? Why, that's Jerry Seinfeld reprising his role <laughs> as Barry B. Benson, presenter of the best animated <laughs> short film what? award at the 80th Academy Awards and star of the infamous B-movie. Oh, is he no. a friend? 
is he a foe? Is he really only in the opening sequence of the game? You'll have to play the sequel to find out. Also, uh, I have to know. I mean, also, though, because you're saying, like, how do we keep this going? I mean, we can put it in a multiplayer, I guess, and, like, make it a looter shooter because everything needs to be Destiny these days. <laughs> everything so. everything is a looter shooter. Yeah. We're, the, we're figuring out how much it costs to get Jerry Seinfeld in a studio for 15 minutes. Um, and we're... we're we're figuring out how much of the budget is left after we book that, but they're they're on board. It's only for fifteen minutes, and you need to make it perfectly clear: this is only for the role of Barry B. Benson. If he tries anything yes. else, we will not pay him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a we got a celebrity ador, ador, endorsement, a celebrity cameo ahead of us in the the Buck Bumble series. I like it. Andrew, what do you got? It's too easy. It's too <laughs> I easy. I told you it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So now for the sequel of uh, Buck Blaster, um, <laughs> we're going mo- <laughs> to move in a slightly different direction. And in a, I, I never, you know, when we, when we launched uh, Blastos of War, Blastos uh, Blasto of effect, War, <laughs> we, we never intended for it to be a franchise or, or even give it the trilogy treatment. This was more of like, the studio bit, the studio f- entry that's going to pay for the art house entry. Mm. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. So, you know, we're talking longevity. We're talking, this is going to be more of like a, like a legend of Zelda where we're going to, each entry is going to kind of flip it, flip it on its head. Look at the, look at the franchise. Look at the overarching series in a new way. Right. Gotcha. So you're going to, you're going to deconstruct it every time. It's going to be a new that's game right. every time. Gotcha. That's right. Well, tell it, tell so, us about some of those. I certainly will. So, uh, so Buck Blasto Two, which is the tentative title, is uh, is going to be the mag- the true magnum opus of the Blasto verse. Blasto Two will uh, focus on the the alien tyrant Bosk. So you remember I mentioned Bosk from the beginning. It, it's gonna you know the the first century is more Blasto's story, but the second is gonna f- is gonna flip the script. Um, it's gonna act a little bit like uh, Dungeon Keeper if you remember mm. that game where you okay. you were you're kind of tasked with building up a, a secret lair. Um, so we're going to help, we're going to be helping Bosk rebuild his secret interstellar base and, you know, kind of to, to pull the thread along after his defeat at the hands of Blasto in the reboot, Bosk is actually going to revisit his plans from the original PS one game and conquer a planet. So you as the player are going to have to help him terraform it. And you all will remember Bosk's plan. Bosk's original plan was to conquer the planet of Uranus. So allow me to introduce <laughs> Blasto Two, penetrating the surface of Uranus. Oh boy! <laughs> thank you, thank you, yeah. thank you. Well, well, well done. Much, much better than there's a snake in my boots. Hey, um, now <laughs> I worked really hard on that setup. You shouldn't have. Um, all right. Well, this is. This is all great, guys. Um, so, the good news is none of the none of the studio reps have left. They're all still interested in your game. That's very good news. It's very good su- news. It doesn't surprising. happen here a lot. It doesn't happen here a lot at debate this when we pitch something. However, that you know, all the all the studios but one are gonna you know take it back, take their notes back to their their money people, and see what they can do. Um, EA <laughs> is ready. To sign you guys today. Oh boy! Hell yeah, um, they are. And this, this, this is our super secret bonus question, guys. This is I did not expect this to happen. EA is ready to sign one of these games today, if you can come up with the best pitch to cram loot boxes and um, and just generate as much money in game as possible. We are going to take a short break, and EA will hear those pitches when we get back. The person who comes up with the best plan is going to get signed by EA today. So uh, we will be right back. If you're anything like me, then you've sat and stared at the clock on your phone and asked yourself, why is this different from the time on my computer? And why is that different from the clock in my car? Can I even trust my cell phone carrier to tell me what time it is? Have I become so reliant on capital C corporations to help me perform daily functions that I can't even tell time without them? Well, then it's time you checked out Time.is. Time.is is 
I assume, the Internet's only truly universal timekeeping device, freed from the shackles of a centralized location or a physical mechanism. Time.is is will tell you exactly what time it is and how off your pleb clock is, all within a less than one one hundredth of a second. Okay, so you've got your time, but what if you want to know, say, the time in Hong Kong? Well, time.is has the correct time for any location on Earth. Just search for your location in the search bar, and you'll find out what time it is there, too. Whether you're synchronizing watches to prepare for an elaborate and needlessly flashy bank heist, or you're recording separate audio tracks for an amateur podcast, time.is is your solution for decentralized timekeeping. Just go to www.time.is. No registration or payment is needed. It's literally just a digital clock. There's like nothing else you have to do and no other expectations that are set. Just use it whenever you need an accurate clock. All right. Um, we are back. E- the rep from EA is back. He's got his big novelty check ready to sign over to you guys. Oh, I love those things. <laughs> oh, they're great. They, yeah. Everyone at EA gives this guy a hard time about him, but he just he loves those novelty checks. This, he keeps they're a t- so much a better to cash. That's you know you, you and him are gonna get along great. You are you are saying the right things. Um, <laughs> um. So Matt, how are you going to cram the Battletoads franchise full of microtransactions? Hell yeah, Kyle. Uh, we are going to do that with weapons. Weapons are the answer here, and, and I'm gonna tell you why. So original Battletoads, side scrolling beat 'em up portions. Um. Every character had like a a three attack combo, you know, it was like jab, jab, big hit. And the big hit uh, in the original Battletoads, it was either like a giant fist that like was way disproportionate to the character, or it was a giant boot with spikes on the bottom of it. Now, as the games went on and the different characters got like different abilities and stuff, they, they got different weapons and shit. Fuck all that noise. All right, we're going big fist, big boot. And all of the loot boxes are going to be different forms of brass knuckles and different boots. And that's it. But we're going to cash in on that because we can do brand deal boots. We can do team color brass knuckles. We're going to go ham on brass knuckles and spiked big boots. And they're going to be weird and disproportionate. And the kids are going to love it. And they're going to steal their parents' credit cards. And they're going to cash in online without their parents permission no matter these cosmetic only um absolutely changes? yeah no they don't they, they oh that's like the they don't do anything um for the attacks themselves you don't get better at the game by spending more money is what you're saying no 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 no. you get you get better at the mm. game because you look cooler um and so all of your friends assume you're better at the game because you look cooler that's how all these things work mm. like the everybody says cosmetics don't do anything cosmetics make your friends jealous and they assume you're better <laughs> because you bought the seven hundred dollar <laughs> mount and they are playing on the basic mount that's how it works i understand i gotcha okay um dave what are you mm. gonna do to cram buck bumble full of microtransactions and just make make ea all the money I, I did this motion when I said all the money, just so everyone is aware. <laughs> it really played in the audio format, yes. <laughs> okay, so I know we want to make all the money, so I'm trying to think of like the different possibilities of not only loot boxes and stuff, but like outside of a game and everything like that, too. So, Sure, sure. So first off, Buck Bumble takes place in the UK. That's, that's an important part of the history. Okay. Sure. Um, so, specific but sure <laughs> so what's big in the uk football or as as we call it here soccer right so yes all all the different soccer teams we can get their jerseys in there no problem right so you get you go in the store you can customize yourself with your favorite soccer team okay uh, so that's Is it for for the bees to wear for, for the, the bees, bees? For, for the bees, <laughs> for to, the wear. bees to wear okay Okay. Absolutely. Listen, they got they already got the stripes. No, I'm 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 here. I'm I'm in the space. So you got that. <laughs> then you got the different uh weapons, right? Cuz this is a shooter. And um I believe oh. in, in <laughs> Listen, it's a game in 2020. Every game's a shooter. So this game's a shooter. Fair. And uh I'm pretty sure you can hold 
at least three guns, if not many more. So the ability to customize yeah. those guns with weapon skins, uh, p- potentially have some super secret guns that are only brought into the store every like three weeks or something, and they rotate out. So that gets people to so come you gotta back. Keep, you got to keep buying. You got to keep, keep buying. You got to check in the in. store. Like uh, we'll it. have like it. every two days. We'll have a different remix of the theme song by Trent Reznor and Lil Nas X. <laughs> For perpetuity. <laughs> Featuring whoever is the hottest meme at the time or whoever, you know, is the biggest pop star of the moment. We'll, we'll get uh, we'll get YouTube YouTube stars on it, Instagram influencers. It doesn't matter. Yeah, Yodel we, Kid'll just, Yodel Kid will be on there like in a hot second. It'll be just as much garbage as we can churn out as fast as it'll possible. It'll be great. And those Got will it. pump out every two days. So like <laughs> just sure. <laughs> it gives you a break, right? So, oh, like, fuck. you get it. You have a whole day to listen to it, and you can just jump in there, grab the new remix. Your iPod will, you know, never be empty. By the way, I'm sure we can. This 2020, we'll find a way to integrate the Switch uh, stuff into your iPod or whatever. Like that all. That all will work. I, separate MP3 players are poised for a comeback. You are absolutely. <laughs> you right. see that? You see that new thing for the PlayStation 4 controller where you like. You plug it into the bottom, and it gives you a couple more like um, bumpers or something on the back of it. You know what I'm talking no. about? No, no, no. Oh, this is a new. This is a real thing. This is a new thing that uh, just came out. It's like to upgrade What's it your. Called? God, I don't know the pro upgrade or something. It adds. It adds like two more like triggers, basically. On yeah. Your... So so it allows huh. you to like, if you want to do most of your stuff on triggers rather than having to use your thumbs and like move them away from the joysticks to press the buttons. Then you have a couple more options on the back of the controller. Anyway, gotcha. moral of the story is if we're doing that sort of nonsense, you can plug an, an MP3 player into there or any, any other peripheral. <laughs> That's no problem. We'll be able to do that stuff. And then like the merch is endless. Everyone wants to buy B stuff. That's not even a question. Like I'm not even going to wait for oh. the answer from EA on that one. We know we already started <laughs> printing it. It's very easy. <laughs> We can make soccer jerseys, right? <laughs> soccer jerseys <laughs> for days. <laughs> Pokemon Sword and Shield came out. They made those soccer jerseys and stuff uh, for the starters. Did they really? Yeah, that's, yes, that's, that that's, that's true. But they did. I have one. <laughs> and uh, they sold yeah. like hotcakes. So <laughs> nothing stopping us from doing it with a great mascot like Buck Bumble. Fire Emblem Three Houses did it too, where it's like, hey, do you want non-branded uniforms for your team? Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm gonna pay for it. Like, uh, it's, that's what I'm saying. I already, I already processed my credit card information. Like, what do you want from me? That's what I'm saying. What more do you want, Nintendo? Yeah. All right. Oh. I, we we love it. The merch, that, was, that was a the lot. Football jerseys. But I know, I know, we're gonna, need, we're gonna need to like keep this pumping for like five years. I know. Oh so. yeah. Well, and and the, the, we're calling up, we're calling up every um every YouTube singer we can already to get the Buck Bumble remixes going. We'll have one with Jerry on those. (laughs) Yeah. You got to do one with Jerry. Just Jerry Seinfeld that will book him for another 30 minutes of studio (laughs) time. No, no. We tack it in. We tack it in at the end of the 15 minutes. It's like the last 30 (laughs) seconds. (laughs) Um, All right. And Andrew, um, how are we going to squeeze every last dime out of Blasto? Sure. So I was trying to think about in my history like what what is that what game have i sunk the most money in that wasn't just like a normal subscription and i think it has to be rock band sure okay and, and when you think about it you know we've talked a lot of, we've talked about rock band a couple times recently but well we never we didn't really breach the subject of the dlc packs and and i'll tell you guys i don't know about you but i was obsessed with like the monday dlc because it was 4.99 every monday you get like a three song pack hmm. oh okay and mostly the songs were like pretty good. It was like top forty or maybe some classic rock, like pretty recognizable stuff. But like I sunk a lot of money into those in those individual song packs. So what I'm thinking is we apply that to the Blasto the Blasto universe. But we're not gonna do song packs. Um and, and I wanna go back to what I originally said, which is what, what this what this franchise is is most known for is just its its high caliber, wise cracking wit. Yes. Very high comedy. High, high comedy. So what I'm going to suggest is we're going to do liner packs. 
Oh no. Oh, this is <laughs> oh, every week. man. Okay. Every every week you can download for a nominal fee. You can download a series of three brand new voiced liners voiced by what's his name? Blasto himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh and and it's gonna be it's gonna be very much like in the same vein of the original game. But if you're lucky, you might even get a Uranus joke. Ooh. Ooh. Like throw it into random random packs. Uh-huh. And that's gonna be that's like your mythic foil card <laughs> that you get. And I mean who who wouldn't pay for <clears throat> The World Will End When Uranus Blows? <laughs> Oh man! Time and history will never forget the first man on Uranus. Are these real, or did you write those? <laughs> due due to its poisonous gases, no man can survive anywhere near Uranus. Matt, you should know Andrew can't come up with anything this hilarious. <laughs> oh, there's and my favorite. There's about to be seven planets because I'm gonna destroy Uranus. I would like to uh, inform the listening audience that this week, while Todd is on vacation, Andrew is on a work trip and is recording this in a hotel room. And somebody (laughs) in room 427 is really confused about what they're hearing from room 429. Good God. Look, I'm at a resort in Phoenix, Arizona. It's not the weirdest thing people have heard. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It's a normal Tuesday stuff for Phoenix. It it super is. Uh, I would like to special special thanks to Sam Swan, therapist, for uh, for his post on all these Uranus jokes on Quora.com. So that's very kind. There you go. (laughs) <laughs> there you go you could really honestly you could really sell me with this one if you tell me just one thing what is it up until you buy one of these packs is there any dialogue at all <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> i'm sold it's just text you got me. It, the game the first the first 10 minutes of the game asks you to read the lines that keep getting yeah. repeated throughout the game and it's your voice until you buy <laughs> these packs yeah or it's like it's the banjo kazooie like wah, wah, wah. just like just noises <laughs> um all right so um the the studio reps are gonna deliberate talk amongst themselves um figure th- some things out so while they do that why don't you guys um give us one last give them give the reps one last a nugget of information to take with them before they go deliberate. Matt. Uh, sure. So if there's one thing that gamers love these days, it's a challenge. Everybody loves a challenging game. And that's what I've brought you. It's going to be real good looking. We're going to totally ditch this crappy cartoon animation that Rare's got going on. We're going to make a beautiful game and we're going to make it hard as hell, but it's going to have a really like fun and flowy combat system it's gonna beat the hell out of everybody and it's gonna keep people coming back and people just are never gonna want to stop playing this game it's gonna be great it's just gonna be hard but it's gonna be battle toads bx 2020 title workshop oh god okay uh dave (laughs) give us give us one last thought to take take the take us into deliberations sure i mean i've given you so much (laughs) (laughs) in a way yes (laughs) like okay i gave you i gave you a great theme song i gave you the possibility of a great remix of a theme song i gave you celebrities i gave you bees i gave you realism i gave you what could be the future samus let's be honest here right (laughs) how does the original how does metroid end you get the secret ending samus takes her helmet off Boom, hair blows Mind back. Blown. Wow, it was a wo- it was this it was this woman this whole time. What do we got with the B? We get to the end. The helmet comes off. Oof. <laughs> Who knew it was this? <laughs> <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Oof, indeed. Top that uh. off with how the original, and this is not something I mentioned. The original of this game was sold with an exclusive Buck Bumble themed Rumble Pack. So we could come up with something like no, that for was you. It? Yes, it absolutely it was. was. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's disturbing. Cause, no, because the because the bees the bees buzz and they rumble, right? So you got to feel sure, like you're sure. in it. Okay. 
I guess in in the real world, Buck Bumble didn't have long, stringy blonde hair. We don't know. We don't know any of that because the helmet was on the whole time. And with this I'm new sorry, reboot, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. With this right, new you're right, reboot, you're right. we're gonna finally show the masses what they've always wanted. Okay. All right. And and Andrew, your last words, your final thoughts. Buck Blasto colon Uranus is out of sight is the game that nobody wants. <laughs> but but at a time like this, I think it's really what we all need. Okay. That's it. That's all I got. Okay. You got <laughs> okay. It. So so the 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 studio reps have left. They've all gone back into their their other oh. conference room. They're they're figuring things out. Um, why don't you guys uh, give us some good vibes and say some nice things about each other? Yeah, sure. Um, man, Dave, fuck Bumble. <laughs> what a guy or gal, whatever. What a bee. What a bee Buck Bumble is. Um, what a bee. And uh, the I'm a bee. The long form B movie drop was very good. As you were talking about the Death Stranding mocap, I was like, man. I really hope he brings Jerry Seinfeld up and turns this into a B movie joke. <laughs> and lo and Absolutely. behold, you did. Uh, man, you just you exceeded all my expectations. So good for you, man. Thank you. I, I can't leave you hanging. Thanks for coming on our like podcast that. today. You knocked it out of the park. <laughs> Absolutely, of course. Um, Andrew, butthole jokes. Damn it, I love a good butthole joke. I don't know if I'll ever not laugh at the word Uranus. Yes, I am a baby. Yes, Thanks, I am man. 12. Yes, yeah. the word Uranus is funny. Thank you for all of those things you did. Um, You're very welcome. Yeah, the I I think that if there is one thing that I have learned this week, it's that uh, action platformer, like 3D action platformers, were really mastered around the like GameCube era. Everything before that should be forgotten by time yeah. and were brought back. Um, and that <laughs> yeah. that is what I have learned today, Matt. I you actually. Honestly, at one point, really sold me on the game, uh, and then he lost me. But you, you were continuously selling me. That's okay. I'll take that. Uh, as someone who, do, as as someone who does not <laughs> play Battletoads and does not really have any interest in Battletoads, whenever like when that new game was announced, I was like, "Cool, yeah, great, that's the thing." Um, your your idea, I was like. I'd play this. Sweet. 100%. Yeah. Throw that throw that on my console. I'll I'll jump in. Hell there. yeah. Um Andrew, I really liked how you took <laughs> the name of my <laughs> <laughs> You took the name of and my stole character. It. And I put did it on co-opt yours. it a little bit. Uh that that was really good. <laughs> and I good. called it my thing. <laughs> <laughs> um but actually I I did not know Blasto at all. Uh, so this was a very good learning opportunity for me, and I did really like your ID, your ID, your idea for a <laughs> DLC packs. Uh, I, I think that's a very good idea, and I think a real game is going to do that uh, in this generation. It's it's just a matter of time. <laughs> All right, Andrew. Yeah, uh, Matt. I played a lot of Battletoads in the SNES era, and I had a real visceral reaction to you talking about like the finishing move with the big fist. Yeah. Because I just, it's just, <laughs> it's just months and months of frustration because those games aren't fun. They're not, they're not enjoyable. No, they're s- <laughs> like, I, I don't, they are hard beyond the point of enjoyment. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know why they're, they're still like viewed so fondly. Um, Cause they're, yeah, they're, they're incorrigible, but I would play your game. Hey, that's cool. Sounds really fun. Thanks. That's exciting yeah. for me. And 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 in true Matt fashion, you went and just and found all the lore that no one ever needed. <laughs> and uh, for that, uh, I I I respect you. I don't like what you said, but I respect it. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, which is which is pretty pretty on the nose there. Uh, and Dave, first of all, I'm going to start with a bad comment. I I don't like <laughs> that. I ca- I am going to fall asleep tonight with the last thing in my brain. <laughs> Being Jerry Seinfeld's character from B Moving with long flowing hair. <laughs> Spoilers for the sequel, but yeah, okay. It's it's in there, and he's he he's not coming out. He's not coming out anytime soon. Andrew's not gonna be able to sleep because every time he closes his eyes, that's what he'll see. I did my job. Yeah. But um, outside of that, uh, Buck Bumble is real, real good, and a a where a, a new like current generation. Like flight sim 
using a B is really intriguing. Um, I'm not sure about the lifelike mechanic or the lifelike appearances of the bees. <laughs> you only see, listen, you only see uh, Buck Bumble from the back. That's the thing. It's all in the cutscenes and the reveal. Right, right. And, and in really, I mean, you're basically gating 35 hours of content before you have to see that nightmare transition. So, like at that point, game. like, you're, you're ready for, like, everything. You're ready for anything. <laughs> and hell, if Death Stranding can do it, you can do it. So, absolutely. Kudos. Well done. Well done, both of you. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, guys, the, the studio reps have come back. Uh, they've, they've all made kind of their decisions, who they're going to fund today. So let's, let's start with Andrew. Um, Andrew, unfortunately, none of the studios, the game studios, are going to pick up um, Blast, the Blasto reboot today. Um, they didn't quite like the overabundance of Uranus jokes. They thought it was a little too childish. Um, however, a, a representative from Illumination, um, the studio that made Minions, was also <laughs> like overheard your pitch, oh, and boy. he wants to talk to you afterwards oh, about that's, a movie that's, deal. That's a win-win, baby. That might be even better, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So unfortunately, you uh, you don't win. No one wins that one today. Um, so Dave, um, everyone everyone really liked your game. They really liked what you what you brought. They um, Insomniac was really close to signing you. Oh wow! Uh, they they thought you they thought they could do some really cool stuff um, and really push their and en- their their developers with the flight mechanics. However, um, they just they looked at how much it would cost to get Jerry Seinfeld into the studio for those fifteen minutes, and that it just it it's, killed it's, the whole it's, project. It's not that much. It's not that <laughs> it's, much. It, <laughs> he, uh, he's, we had to put him on retainer. <laughs> <laughs> he he wouldn't he wouldn't do just the fifteen minute deal. He he someone said fifteen minutes and he just laughed for like for for that long for sixteen and, minutes and hung up the and, phone. And yeah. did we record it? Because if not, they're wasting money. <laughs> <laughs> so so they're they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna call in some some contacts and see if may, maybe get back to you after they uh, they put out another Spider Man game mm-hmm. and have a little more money to pl- to throw around. Mm-hmm. So Matt, uh, you you are our winner today. Yeah! You, you got signed by EA. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I'm so happy. <laughs> what a win! They like your layout for for franchises. They like the awful, horrible grind of difficulty that you've got planned. But what really did it for him was that that those loot boxes, Matt. the The weapons, the customizable, the the skins. They they just saw dollar signs and were like, get that. Uh, they they're calling Microsoft up right now and trying to trying to transfer the rights over. So, uh, do, do you want to say anything? EA Sports, it's in the toad. Oh, uh, okay. Well, we'll uh, we'll cut that for you when we, we'll act like you didn't do that. Man, wow, it's crazy that Matt didn't have anything to say there. Okay. Anyway. First off, I edit podcast, so suck it. That's staying in. Second off, that was funny. <laughs> Laugh at me. That was funny. Please clap. Uh, please, please clap. <laughs> um, so the, the the EA rep heard you say that, and like they're they're still gonna sign you, but he he's leaving. That's you right. Gotta, you got to work with BioWare now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, thanks, everyone, for listening to Debate This. Uh, please follow along the debate at um, on Twitter and Facebook at Debate This Cast or uh, f- go to our website at DebateThisCast.com. Dave, thank you so much for joining us today. Of course. Do you, do you want to say anything else before we go? Sure. Um, well, one, thank you for having me. This was hilarious. <laughs> um <laughs> thanks for coming it was so like so glad to have you yeah yeah i'm glad i could finally get on here i know i know uh g giovanni was was on earlier and i was i was jealous of that so i'm glad i managed to kick into the next spot hell yeah man where For where sure. can we find you where can people find you online yeah yeah so uh i well okay so i am part of a podcast called left trigger right trigger where uh I guess what's called a video game book club, whatever that means. But uh, it's every other Tuesday. We uh, pick a topic, be it whatever. Pick a topic for me right now, Andrew. Who knows what? Um, Spork. It's Spork. Oh, my God. 
Okay. <laughs> Spor- <laughs> lol, lol, lol random. So, <laughs> so we would take the topic of spork, I guess, and um, we'd all come. Oh, what a great pitch this is. We'd all come and we'd pick a, a video game that we think best represents that topic. And we sort of have not a debate, but we, we talk about what we think uh, really enhances those types of games and, and what their failings are and really how the industry can possibly better themselves and how we as players can uh, look at these things in different ways because games are just metaphors as we like to all like to say. Um, wow, that was really good. Yeah, that was really, really good. <laughs> um, and then the other podcast, which was mentioned earlier, that is no longer happening, but you can find it, um, is Full Metal Bazinga, which was a um, Big Bang Theory watch along that turned into a strange sci fi drama. And um, both of those podcasts can be found on Libsyn. They can be found on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all those all those fun places. Um, and if for some reason you want to follow. Uh, me, I am Bones McJones on Twitter and Instagram <laughs> and all that stuff. That's good. I think um, I think last year we were we were um, every other week, but now we took a week off, so I think we'll be on the on same, the same schedule? Tuesday schedule. Oh yeah, boy! So our episodes will come out along with you guys now. Yeah. So you can get a one-two punch of a podcast that's listening. That's right. Yep, that's right, baby. Thanks everyone for listening. Until next time, I'm Kyle Harper. I'm Matt Put Pimple in Smash. Cole? I'm David. Buck Bumble is the best thing I've ever heard, and I really hope it doesn't cause too many nightmares tonight, Flam. (laughs) Uh, And I'm Andrew. Uranus is a gas giant, Henderson. (laughs) We're saying thanks for debating with us. And if you think you're wrong or just want to beat up Andrew for telling so many Uranus (laughs) puns, uh, you can come fight us behind the swing sets, nerds. You can find me at Todd G. Thomas at gmail.com. <laughs>